Are you sure you want to do this? I ask. Sometimes it is better that we leave the gate shut. Anger flashes into her eyes, and they flick upward to meet mine. No, she says with hardness. I need this. I have to speak with him. We hold one another's gaze for a long moment, and that feeling of wrongness builds in my chest. It tightens my throat, clams my hands. Let's get started then, I say. I cross the room, down the hall as Iona stands to follow me. I open the door, watching her as she follows, the golden pocket watch swinging through the air. She steps into the dark room, standing awkwardly in a corner. I step inside, hesitating before closing the door. One more question, I say, fighting the rising dread that swims in my blood. How did he die? Iona's eyes jump to mine once more, and something changes in her expression. He was murdered. There's been this look of dread and apprehension in Sully's eyes since the moment he opened the church doors to find me. It's been growing into something hard and cold, moment by moment. But with my revelation, it solidifies into something heavy as the world. Sit down, he says in something very close to a growl. He points to one of the two chairs set in the middle of the room. I sit. Dread and fear and anticipation climbing in my throat, Sully closes the door and locks it. The huge man stalks around the room, lighting a match to first one candle, then taking it to light the others. The room gradually grows lighter until a dozen of them are lit, and I can finally see more than a foot in front of me. I rub my hands over my arms because suddenly I realize that it is freezing in here, despite the roaring fire Sully has kept in the other room. Deep, slow breathing pulls my attention back to the man. He stands in one corner before a solitary lit candle. His back is turned to me, his hulking shoulders blocking out most of the light, casting him in an eerie glow. His long hair hangs around his face. He breathes slow, deep there's a quiver to it, something unsteady. I want to ask him if he's okay, to ask what is the matter because everything in me screams that there is, but I'm too petrified to open my mouth. A draft pushes through the edges of the covered window, sending the flames dancing atop the candles. A shiver works its way down my spine. Sully suddenly steps back from the corner and drops down into the seat across from me, he holds his hands out. The watch, he says, nodding to his right hand. Your hand, he indicates the left. I can't stop shaking. I set the pocket watch in his hand, and trembling, I rest my hand in his other. He closes his fingers around mine, fully engulfing it with his sighs. Sully's eyes slide closed. I watch his face seeing something come over it, like he's slipping underwater, preparing to hold his breath against certain death. His breathing becomes very light and shallow. His entire body becomes very still. The temperature of his hand drops. The pain in my chest comes to a peak, and I realize just how hard my heart is beating. My hands are slick with sweat. I lean forward in my seat, far too close to Sully's face for comfort. My breath is held. Jack, Sully says, his voice low and deep. I jump when he speaks, startled, a bent twig on the verge of snapping. I know you've moved on, but I have someone here who wishes to speak to you. If you want to speak to her, please show yourself. Sully is quiet for a long moment afterward, one that seems to roll into an eternity of anticipation. What's happening? I whisper, a cloud of breath billowing out from me. Sully lets out a slow, long shh, his face suddenly going peaceful. All the blood in my body drops into my feet. Iona, Sully says. There's something breathy in the way he says my name, Something disbelieving and hopeful and so full of everything. 